Phenomenal, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we have already something like the Honourable David Parker. Speaker, that was a very shallow contribution from the Minister for Economic Development, who didn't even get round to talking about economic development. No, no, he, 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 well, that's right, there's no adequate plan for that. He misrepresented David Shearer, who's been out there with a placard anti-mining. Actually, uh, Mr Joyce, he was with a placard protesting against mining in national parks. Where, that's right, with 50,000 other people. The, the National Party eventually, eventually, eventually admitted their error and reversed uh, what was the major part of their economic plan for the last term. Mr Speaker, you know the National Government's in trouble in the regions when they asked themselves a patsy question like they asked today, which was how are things in the region, and they quoted a business confidence survey. Well, why are they doing that? Well, we know that the polling of the National Party is declining quite markedly in just about every region in New Zealand, just about all of them. Why? Why? Well, because record numbers of New Zealanders are leaving New Zealand and leaving the regions, and the sad reality is that National doesn't seem to know about it, either that or they don't care. Why do I say, well, they don't seem to know about it? Well, I asked a primary question of Bill English a couple of weeks ago. Uh, were there numbers of people leaving New Zealand being replaced by people coming from overseas? And he said in answer, quotes, uh, as I understand it, there are no regional statistics that specifically isolate the number of people leaving any particular region to move overseas. Unfortunately, he was wrong. There are. There are Statistics New Zealand series which show uh, who's moving from each district council area and each regional council area. And Parakura Horame asked me how many. Well, the answer is record numbers. Of the 53,000 people who left from New Zealand to Australia last year, and that's just Australia, on a permanent basis, a lot of them go from the regions, and some of our greatest rates of population growth are from the regions. The saddest part of all that is 40% 40, 40 of them are between the age of 18 and 30. And we've got to ask ourselves, why is it so many 20-year-olds no longer have hope an opportunity in New Zealand, but instead feel that they've got to go to Australia. And the answer is because our economy is not performing and they haven't got jobs. Today, the National Party said that they advanced another part of their export agenda, another plan. Another plan. Well, you know, this is the, 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 last, the last in a long list of them, and none of them seem to make any difference. And I'm going to tell the House why, in my opinion, that is the case. It's because they're not addressing the issues that need to be addressed. They say that they've got a plan to develop the export economy, and yet they're not removing the tax bias that, that fights against investment going into there. And then they're surprised that people go to Australia. They say that we need, uh, we need more money in those industries, and yet they oppose improvements to KiwiSaver to make sure that everybody saves. They say that they want to make improvements to uh, the innovative sector, and yet they oppose a research and development tax credit. Their actions speak louder than their words, and the consequences are visited upon our young people who are voting with their feet. So, Mr Speaker, the regions are feeling ignored. They're right to feel ignored on, so on roading. We had questions today about all this money going into the roads of national significance, some of which are of marginal economic benefit. There is no doubt about that. The government's own cost-benefit analysis shows that these are a poor spend, and yet they insist on spending billions there to the detriment of the regions. And the mayors in the regions are now complaining that they're not getting enough money to maintain and improve their roads because it's all going to these roads of national significance. And it just about all is. It's an exaggeration to say it all is, but there's a huge predominance of that money going into those... Go, going, going into, what's that? Uh, we would can the poo hall to Wellsford Road. Because, um, yeah, we would instead spend about a billion dollars less, about a billion dollars less. We've been saying it for about a year. The National Party still don't understand it. We would spend $400, billion and fix the $400 million and fix the road, but we wouldn't waste the other billion. Mr Speaker, New Zealand's not being held back by a lack of infrastructure. We're being held back by the lack of an, a decent economic plan. Fish and chips in Wanganui is the, and that's, that's as good as it gets under the National Party. That's an economic plan under their watch. The Honourable Hekia Parata. 